Hello, everybody. Welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me on this channel today, guys, or whatever day it may be for you. For me, it is July 25th, Tuesday, 2023. It is 421 p.m. Eastern Time as I am speaking and recording. Praying you guys are having an amazing day. Mine was not. It was another chaotic one, but I made it one. I just continue to reach and press forward and find that joy in Christ. Called my brother Dave, going through the same thing. This is a spiritual battle, folks. If you're feeling it, if you're going through something that's not making sense, trust me, the word of God says believers all around the world are going through the same thing. This is a spiritual battle daily, 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 daily. We are in enemy territory. Bible says that Satan is the roar of this world, even though we know God is the, the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. We've said multiple times we're waking up in enemy territory. We are strangers and uh, foreigners in a strange land, I should say. But guys, thank you for joining me. That's that's why it's so important to every morning before, man, it, it's, it'd be nice if I could do it before I got out of bed, but I've got my routine. I'm sure you guys got your routine. As long as before we walk out of your house or go anywhere too far, we're putting on that home or God, we're praying to God to send his heavenly angels to surround us and guard us and protect us. All these things that we got to do that, folks. But again, I praise God for each and every one of you. The thumbs ups, the likes, the comments, I appreciate it greatly. I truly do. And it, it builds me up, encourages me, and I pray it does the same thing for you guys when you get on here and hear this. All for the glory of God, folks. Uh, living up to the name. Living up to the name. Uh, I think this is going to be a spiritual checkup for us, folks. Um, Ephesians chapter 2, 1 through 10. Good stuff. Good stuff. Again, I can put it out there. What you do with it, folks, that, that's up to you and daddy. Um, Ephesians 2, 1 through 10 is our studies. Um, Ephesians 2, 4 through 5 is our lead off verses. And the word of God says this. Beautiful. God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when, past tense, when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And it goes on even more beautiful than that. But key, key, key. The, the tense, the presence, the, I don't know which we'll call it, you guys, past, present, future. God who is rich in mercy, present, God's always rich in mercy, made us alive, past tense, when we were dead in our transgressions, past tense. It is done, guys. It is complete. Richard DeHaan writes this today. A new, <laughs> a new Christian was reading through the Gospels. Good Lord. After she finished, she told a friend she wanted to read a book on church history. All righty. When her friend asked why, the woman replied, I'm curious. I've been wondering when Christians started to become so unlike Christ. Woo! Praise God. You know what that new Christian is, folks? That new Christian is somebody God chose and gave immediate revelation to. Do you see, I've shared a story when I went down to Texas years ago, three, four years ago for that convention. Uh, it was a week-long convention, and the most powerful thing for that whole week was the Lord spoke to me. It wasn't audible, but it might as well have been just the simple words, do you see? These are people that call themselves believers. These are people that call themselves Christians. These are people that say they're the body of Christ. These are people that say they're the church. Guys, this is not a joke. This is not a joke. We got to live up. Mm -mm -mm. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Curious when people started. Oh, my. We can, uh, you know what? I know the answer right away. Right away. It's, it's, it became someone like Christ immediately. Um, we can understand why this new convert was perplexed. There is often disparity between the life of Christ and the lives of many who bear his name. Folks, oh, come on, people. In fact, some believers are even imitating the world instead of trying to live like Jesus. Lord, hold my tongue on this one. I, I know of many churches, many churches, guys, they, they do not glorify God. They don't lift up the name of Jesus. They just want to fill them pews, fill that money bucket up, expand, 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 not glorifying God, folks. Say what you will. It's it's the truth. We've all seen it. We've all seen it. Uh, almost 2,000 years have passed. There, there we go. Since followers of Jesus were first called Christians. 
Acts, that's Acts chapter 11, verse 26. Today, we who have placed our trust in the Savior still bear that name and march under the same banner as those early believers. Lord, folks, you've been following me, you've been listening, you know where I stand on that. You know, if you want to call yourself a Christian, praise God, as long as you're giving God the glory and you're living up to the name of Christ. Again, I prefer to be called a child of God and a disciple and a follower of Jesus Christ. I love it. Sounds beautiful to me. More letters on my jacket when I get it made up. Amen. Um, the Bible says that we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. From the beginning, when he knew you and chose you, he knew in the beginning what the works were going to be that he had for you. And is God awesome or what, people? Um, when we call ourselves Christians, listen to this carefully, we are saying to the world that Christ is our Savior and that we are following him. If you're going to call yourself a Christian, are you acting like it? Are you just acting like it on Sundays? Are you only acting like it Christmas and Easter? You only acting like it when you're surrounded by Christians and believers, guys. You know, you've heard me say about, you know, the, what do you call it? I might as well call it Jesus paraphernalia, Jesus t-shirts, cross hats and all that. Guys, I don't just wear that to church on Sundays. You know, it's like I just got back from the gym. People are in there wearing uh, anytime fitness clothes. I, I know a gym you go to. Uh, you don't have to advertise that you're here. I, I know where you go. What, what, who are you representing outside of these four walls? Who are we representing outside of those four walls of church, folks? God's got works for all of us to do. He knew beforehand. The word says it right here. Are we living up to his potential? Are we getting in the word every day? Like this new Christian, man, who, bam, she got it immediately. Uh, man, I guarantee she's still chewing and digesting the word of God. Um, Christians have a glorious name. It is a great privilege to be identified with Christ and a great obligation to live up to his name. Amen. Thank you, Richard DeHaan. And our quote today, when you walk with Christ, you'll be out of step with the world. I like that one. That's, there's so many scriptures that would back that quote up. Um, friendship with the world is enmity, separation with God. If you're focusing on this world, you're separating yourself from God. If you're people pleasing, if you're pleasing yourself, pride, you know, I, this and that for me, 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 God, man, you are pushing God so far away from you. And then we want to wonder why, why this is happening to me in my life. Guys, if you're going to call yourself a Christian, I got to say you got, again, I, I, I prefer to call myself a follower and a disciple of Jesus Christ, a child of God, redeemed, saved, sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ, who sits at the right hand and our study scriptures say we are seated together with him in the heavenly places, guys. How much more confirmation and affirmation from our daddy do we need to understand how powerful we are? Satan has nothing on you guys. Absolutely, whatever you're going through right now, even if you're not feeling it, keep reading the word of God. Read it out loud if you got to. Stand up and shout it. Go find a stranger. Read our study scriptures with them. Ten little verses. Just read it. See what happens. See if the Holy Spirit doesn't make his presence known and maybe bring somebody to know Christ. That's the things we got to do. We got to, got to, got to, got to quit being quiet, shy, and only, you know, it's like, uh, just like I said about the gym guy, we, we got to let people know who we are, who we're in love with, who our daddy is, who we represent. Said multiple times, God doesn't need us to defend him. He wants us to represent him. We're walking billboards for our Lord and Savior. Are we actually acting like it by the way we act, the way we talk, things like this, folks? And we all need work. We all need work, including myself. Am I perfect every day? Absolutely not. Do I go before the Lord and confess my, my shortcomings and my faults every day? Absolutely I do. Do I look behind me or do I press forward? Press forward, guys. That's what we keep doing. So thank you for joining me today again, guys. And until tomorrow, Wednesday the 26th, uh, enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see what daddy says then. I love you guys.